Fox News host Janine Pirro did some of the dumbest commentary of all time on her show this week. I wish I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm not exaggerating. Wait until you see what she calls Democrats. We now enter a new phase of the Trump presidency amidst the outrageous, outlandish, left-wing, chaotic mob behavior of socialist Democrats. American momentum is now around winning, the winning that outsider candidate Donald Trump promised us, not the anarchy Democrats, a.k.a. demon rats, want to impose on us. The tactics of these demon rats and Trump-hating leftists are backfiring. Americans are now buying into and choosing results over politically correct losing behavior of other presidents. And take a listen to this one. But Michelle says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. <laughs> That's what this new Democratic Party is about. Really, Eric? You, a former attorney general of the United States, condone violence? Someone who thinks beliefs and words justify physical assault? Did you even go to law school? Look, here's the bottom line. We're not even two years into Trump's presidency. The economy, record high. Unemployment, record low. Under President Trump, Americans saved $3.2 trillion in taxes. 3.3 million jobs have been created. The military is being rebuilt. 120 federal judges have been appointed. Two United States Supreme Court justices. A much improved trade deal for the U.S. with Canada and Mexico. The stock market has hit historic highs 80 times. 81,000 illegal aliens have been deported by ICE. 15 hostages have been brought home from countries like North Korea, Iran, Venezuela, and of course, just today, Pastor Andrew Brunson from Turkey. So to all those Trump-hating demon rats and the mainstream media, keep up the antics. You're all losers, sore losers, stupid losers, too dumb to even know that you're losing. He said it himself just a few minutes ago in Kentucky. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning. I don't know about you, but I'm not tired yet. I love how she makes that smug face as if it's like, it's not even a question. I obviously just owned your ass. Like she has that look of like, I know. I'm really good at what I do. I'm just going to stick the landing here and go like this. I'm, I'm. I'm fascinated by the fact that she doesn't realize that she sounds like a absolutely ridiculous human being. Like I'm I'm amazed by that. It's really interesting to me that like you could just do everything you did there and still think like nailed it. <laughs> like what? She at the end she's like you're sore losers. You're stupid losers. And at the beginning, and she sprinkles it in a few time, uh, times in other places there as well, she, say, she says, Democrats, a.k.a. demon rats. <laughs> Again, as if, like, pe like, we're all supposed to listen and go, oh, God, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. That, that sounds like, so, I mean, if you close your eyes and listen to her talk, I don't know about you guys, but I hear Noam Chomsky. I hear fucking, <laughs> if you read her words on the page, it's Socrates, Plato, uh, Kant, obviously a brilliant mind. Democrats, a.k.a. 
Ready for this one? I thought about this one for a while. I mean, demon rats. Oh, I've been so pwned. Oh, I'm now lying on the ground. Am I dead? Somebody check my pulse. I've been destroyed in the in the battle of ideas. <laughs> demon rats. What are you six? I mean, god damn, that's grade school shit. Demon rats. You go back through all of secular talk history. You go find a single time that, I don't know, I called uh, Republicans Republicans or, or something. Anything that's akin to demon rats like she's doing for Democrats. I haven't done it because I'm not a child. Okay, but now putting that aside, let's actually get into the substance or lack thereof of what she's saying. So first of all, Totally disingenuous. The whole thing about Eric Holder where, where now there's this mass delusion on the far right where they have to pretend like Eric Holder is literally advocating violence. When, when they go low, we go high. What did that mean? That meant, oh, when they go low, as in they do gutter politics and do smear attacks, we go high, as in we're above the fray and we're not going to respond in the gutter. We're not going to be vicious back. We're going to be above the fray and we're going to, you know, uh, keep our dignity and be honorable. That's what Michelle Obama meant when she said, when they go low, we go high. When, uh, you know, I've heard Bill Maher and others say, oh, when they go low, we go lower, meaning when they fight tough and, and, and smear, yeah, we're going to fight harder and maybe we'll smear you back. Turnabout's fair play, son. And now Eric Holder put his own little twist on it. When they go low, we kick them. Now, that does, it's not like Republicans are literally going low where like they get on their knees and then they crawl up to your knees and they're like, I'm going to punch your kneecap or something. No, when, when they go low, that's metaphorical for they're going to do gutter politics. And he says, we, we kick them, meaning we're also going to do gutter politics back. They are fucking pretending that Eric Holder literally advocates physical assault, and they're expecting you to be dumb enough to not catch it and call him out. How deep in that fucking bubble do you have to be to, to go, you know what, I think that's right, man, Eric Holder's violent, man. God damn it. Oh, it's so stupid. Why do you do this, Janine Pirro? And then, okay, now let's get to the meat of what she's saying. Uh, she goes, runs through this list of what's supposed to be Trump's accomplishments. Economy record high. Unemployment record low. Think about the fact that she's summing up what's happening in our economy in a little fucking quick little four-word soundbite. Economy, uh, no, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Five words. Economy record high. Unemployment low. Or record low, so six words. Dude, okay, here, let's be more nuanced and reasonable, but I know you're incapable of doing that, so just bear with me. Um... To say economy record high, she goes on to talk about it's the stock market, I mean. Right, the stock market is a reflection of how the rich are doing. It's not a reflection of your average Joe. Uh, I mean, come on, this, is, this stuff is fucking obvious. The fact I even have to point this out is sad. And then unemployment record low. About wages. Want to talk about wages there, Janine? Uh, just so you know, wages, when adjusted for inflation, so another way to describe that is real wages, they're falling. They're falling. Real wages are falling. So, and that 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Half of workers in America make $30,000 a year or less. We don't even have a living wage as the minimum wage. So there's so much going on. She's just ignoring so much to try to make a shitty partisan point. Everything's great because Trump is president. Um, and then... Trillions saved in taxes, she said. What she doesn't tell you is 83% of those tax breaks go to the top 1%. He eviscerated the inheritance tax, the estate tax, which only goes to people with fucking estates. So now, up your first $10 million, no taxes on that. But over $10 million, that's when the estate tax finally kicks in. Before, it was like 5 or $2 million or something like that. So, uh, in other words, let me uh, help spoiled rich kids even more. And, and that's so funny because they have this idea of, like, welfare creates dependence. You can't just give people money. But then when it comes to just giving people money who are the kids of rich people, they're like, oh, no, that I'm totally in favor of. Give them as much money as they want, even though they ha don't have to do anything. Um, cutting the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21% at a time when corporations are already paying a historically low percentage of the tax burden. Um, she says the military is being rebuilt, which tells you everything about how disconnected she is from objective reality, because the military was already preposterously large. And yes, it is even bigger now, but that would be something that is negative we were all our military was already bigger than the biggest nine militaries 
the next nine biggest militaries combined. And we increase that. When 29 million people still don't have fucking health care. And she's like, oh, isn't it great? What? That's not great. We're bombing eight different countries. What happened? Trump was talking about getting out of Afghanistan, getting out of Iraq. But now all of a sudden it's great when you have an unnecessarily ridiculously large imperialistic military budget? Fuck out of here. And then she says, oh, judges, so many judges appointed. As if, like, that's just a victory. Like, no, obviously those particular judges matter. And virtually all of them are elitist prep school pricks with a far right-wing ideology that's terrible for working class Americans. New, a new trade deal. Yeah, and it's very similar to the old trade deal, and there's a giant giveaway to corporate America in that new trade deal, and it's NAFTA 2.0. He's not breaking up the establishment, he's serving them. And then she brags about 81,000 people deported. Wouldn't any reasonable person go, okay, you know what? We obviously have to go through this with a fine-tooth comb because a lot of the people who are being deported are not even criminals. Like, I'm fine with deporting people who are violent criminals. Um, I'm not against all deportations. I think some deportations are perfectly reasonable, like violent criminals. But these guys are just, I don't care, just fucking de don't, deport them. Illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants, just brown people, don't care, deport them. And so she, 81,000 deported, as if that's like, oh, that requires no more discussion. It's just, it's so flippant, and it's so dumb, and it's like she prides herself in being close-minded and just being a cheerleader for Donald Trump. So I have no words for you. If you, if somebody watches Janine Pirro and they're convinced by anything she says, it's like, oh, God. That's just sad.